baby, won't you sail with me out on the rolling sea? We'll find some place to go, maybe down to Barbados. It's an island off somewhere in the middle of nowhere, sailing to freedom. G'day people, because we have been delayed, I was a bit worried about the Roy Power batteries just sitting in the factory and their state of charge, so I decided to put the system together today and start charging them. I thought this would take me quite a bit of time. There are a lot of cables, a whole box of about 25 kilograms worth, and some of them had plugs that hadn't had their wires attached, so I was rather pleasantly surprised when after a couple of hours, it was all done. Now I should point out that I really took my time and double checked everything, so I reckon it could have taken just an hour. It is unbelievably so easy to set up. Just watch and see how easy this whole process is. And yes, taping up my camera in a dodgy position so it falls over. Yep, sailing into freedom. Nothing but quality. This is the all-in-one solar charge inverter that integrates an inverter, a battery charger and an MPPT solar charge controller. All in one! I am rigging it up today to take power from the grid to charge the batteries. I need access to the bus bars and the power distribution units to attach the cables, so off come the lids. All the cables are prepared to specific lengths according to my drawings given to Roy Powell. They are all labelled, have lugs and all have heat shrink and abrasive protective covers. All power cables have seals and lock into place so they cannot vibrate loose. So I simply follow the schematics given to me by Roy Powell. All the cables are labelled, so it's a very easy job. These bus bars here are very specific to my battery system because I have a lot of batteries. There is only one more thing to do and that is to connect the monitor with the system which basically means I need to connect all of these labelled wires to the plugs provided. The wires you can see coming from the orange cable in the bottom left of the screen. Don't worry people, everything is coded and labelled. 
Now these are colour coded, but um, they've got numbers on them, which I'm thankful for because you know how I am with colours. You might see some smoking <laughs> if I install it by colours, but we'll just check out the codes. So I've got to do these plugs and six plugs. And now because I don't have air conditioning, because Roy Power also do air conditioning, um, so that cuts out one lot of plugs. I'm not sure which one air conditioning is, but I've got three and six plugs. All right, that's done. Look at the tiny ladders. <laughs> I have to take pictures on my camera and um, work them out. Although they're pretty, um, they're markedly different, so it's not too hard. All right, let's go put it together and see if I don't blow it up. It's all right, I've checked everything. I triple checked these and then double checked them against each other. They've got the code anyway down here. So, um, Unless I'm a complete drip, it should be good. The whole system without comms cables attached, nothing is happening of course, so let's connect the comms cables. Communication cables are now connected to every piece of hardware. This takes all of three minutes. I'm not kidding people, this is such an easy foolproof system. Remember people, this is a marine battery system. It is not just the lithium batteries. Everything is designed to work together, from the monitors to the chargers to the inverters, all the way down to the power distribution units and the batteries themselves. They're all made by Roy Power and designed to work together, so there is no mismatch in communication. And incidentally, if you have any Victron gear on your boat, all of their equipment is completely compatible with Roy Power. And now everything is easily available on this touchscreen monitor, which can be Bluetooth to your phone, so wherever you are on the boat, you can see the state of your batteries. All of the equipment, it was originally in Chinese, but there's a language selector, so now it's in English. So I've just got to configure the system, um, and then we can start charging. If you want a complete, robust energy storage system that is designed for the marine environment and easy to install, check out what Roy Powell has to offer on their website. Send them an email for a quote. You will be pleasantly surprised. The links are in the description. All right, Plucky, listen up. We need cables, solar panels, wires, and the whole bloody kit. How else are we going to power this thing? Ah, but, mate, you're always so practical. I'm picturing us on a tropical beach sipping rum surrounded by bikini-clad beauties. Tropical beach? Are you out of your goddamn mind? How are we even getting there without propulsion? Propulsion, sheermopulsion. We'll drift, Bart, the wind, the waves. Nature's got us covered. Drift? Drift? You think the Elcano catamaran's just gonna float us to paradise? Without power, we're dead in the water, Plucky. Dead in the water? Nah, mate, we're alive, free, and chasing the horizon. You worry too much. Hey Internet, I hope you're all doing well today. Plucky and myself would love to earn your subscription today. So we're going to reveal the core of the Elcano systems, the electricals. And as you know, we're planning on sailing around the world with an aluminium catamaran using nothing but net zero energy. And that basically means three things. A lot of solar, a lot of batteries, and also regeneration of power coming from the electrical motors. And to top it all off, ways of controlling and monitoring the situation in real time and maybe even predicting its usage uh, for the coming hours or days. Which makes up all for a very complicated system. As it's really too much to do this in one episode, uh, we're gonna focus today on the nuts and bolts or should I say, the cables and the wires. So let's dive in with showing you the wiring schemas for the Elcano Challenge. 
Uh, I made a little template. Uh, you have to look at this, that the black arrow is actually the bow of the catamaran with the uh, blue dotted line being the port bow and uh, port hull, sorry, and the red dotted line being the starboard hull. Um, I'm gonna show you first to uh, the backbone. So the backbone is actually from the batteries to our main systems. And it's a fairly big system. So let's zoom in a little bit. And I'm gonna show you first. So uh, initially we planned on uh, putting the batteries together with the engines in the same compartment. So you see the Roy Power batteries here. You will see more of them later on in this episode. Uh, and they're actually uh, connected through with two uh, uh, cutoff switches to a bus bar, which then crosses over to the porthole uh, where you have the si similar setup and then it goes up the porthole to a tech room, as we call it, where you will find the main components. Uh, also to the fuse panels are uh, next to the tech room. And then on the top you also have uh, a connection going to the windlass because uh, that is also running on 48 volt. Um, what do we have more is uh, in the tech room you will find uh, several things. First of all the Roy Pau inverter which will be connected to the four solar panels sitting on the stern of the boat. Uh, you also have the DC to DC converter for the 12 volt system uh, so this is connected to the 48 volt backbone and then uh, to the 12 volt batteries you have the victron uh, bus bar i would call it it's links it also has some uh, monitoring systems in it uh, which is actually um, I, uh, then connected to the main cables and we chose to do the traditional route going with uh, normal copper cables but as these need to carry a thousand amps uh, on 48 volts they need to be fairly big so uh, i'll show you the calculation uh, in a minute but they need to be somewhere between uh, 250 and 500 millimeters squared surface area so they're real uh, heavy and expensive cables uh, what do we have more? Uh, we also have four uh, Victron MPPT uh, solar charge controllers and these are for the uh, solar panels on the roof. Um, and then of course you have some uh, switches to be able to turn systems off um, and uh, to completely shut down uh, the entire batteries from all the other systems. The 220 volt system, so uh, we start with uh, two plugs on either side where you connect the shore power in which uh, run into, and let me zoom into this a little bit, which go into a switch so you can uh, switch them around into a main fuse, then into the Victron isolation transformer which then will power the inverter with 220 volt. Uh, behind that is, uh, of course, the fuses and a GFI breaker for the 220 volt uh, outlets, which you see here spread out across the boat. So this is the rough layout of, of the main wiring. Uh, we also have a 12 volt system. So the 12 volt system is powered by that DC to DC converter from the 48 volt backbone, which charges the batteries which then go to the 12 volt fuse uh, panels and that's mostly for systems like lighting, uh, the navigation lights, uh, the radio. So for the next episode you will see uh, this, this is the Raymarine, the network and uh, the peplink systems. Much more complex than uh, what we're able to cover in, in this episode. So the initial design and the wiring scheme as I just showed you are actually to have the batteries in the engine compartment under the bed. They're not interfering with the motor but uh, yeah it's, it's all together. Now we are uh, looking at alternatives because uh, due to weight distribution and also the delays we had with uh, looking at the new fit out of the catamaran we might put them here which is right next to the tech room. Uh, and this gives them better weight distribution because they're actually sitting 
flush with the mast and uh, on both sides so the the point I uh, the point of balance and the point of gravity should be better let's have a quick look at the tech room also uh, this is sitting uh, in the midships as well and houses all the important electronic and electrical equipment so at the bottom left you see the Victron isolation transformer, uh, very critical in not having corrosion and electrolysis when connected to shore power. This is the uh, Roy Pau inverter, which you will see more in a few minutes. And these are the solar controllers and below that is the 12 volt DC to DC uh, converter. And then also the 220 volt cabinet with the fuses. So all the other fuses will be actually in the stairwell. So this is the fuse cabinet that uh, you can uh, manage from going downstairs. So how do we design? We rely a lot on our specialized teams and you see their names scrolling by here that we made. These are people who are uh, dedicating their time, their effort uh, freely to help us out. We couldn't do it without them. So. Thanks a lot uh, for everyone. We kind of have a flow where we first uh, investigate ourselves. The things that we need to do, the interior things we need to design ourselves. All the rest is done by the Naval Architects of Odyssey. But for example, we rely on AI. You see me here uh, doing the calculations and interrogations of the cable sizes and the voltage drop across the, uh, the backbone cables. So we rely on AI and then uh, when we have a kind of an idea of what we want to do, we go back to our specialized groups to get their feedback and put it forward to uh, the people. So you see me here, it's on WhatsApp. These are endless discussions on the best options, the best uh, ways of doing stuff. Uh, and these people really have their own expertise they are some of them have been building boats for years some of them uh, are electronic specialists uh, we have a guy doing electronics for satellites we have an awesome it team from which you will see a lot later so we couldn't do it without it so you guys maybe only see uh, plucky and myself but just know that there are a lot of people on the background contributing to this project and making a real good job out of it.